Hey everybody, it's Emma from Paint Pony Studios and today I'm going to be doing a little uh, personal collection tour for you guys. Um, this is my cabinet back there where I keep all of my horses. Um, my mother also has her collection which is in a separate room. But today I thought I would go over my horses and show you um, some of my favorites and just show you what I have in my collection. So I actually have all of my drafters on one row. Um, I don't have a lot of drafters. Which is sad, because I would definitely love more. Um, the first one here is Rainier, the 2017 Web Special. If you haven't seen that unboxing video, it is already up on our channel, and you can go check it out. Um, I'll probably put a link to that playlist at the end of this video. Um, next one is Pomplamoose. I did originally get him from the JAH uh, magazine. Uh, he was a 2010 special run. Um, this little guy, he is the 2012 Breeds of the World resin horse. I actually traded one of my um, celebration models that year for him and he went on to win me a prize model at Briarfest. So, awesome little guy. Um, this is O'Leary's Irish Diamond. Um, I, I also got him the same year he came out in 2010. And I took him to Briarfest and I actually got to see the real O'Leary's Irish Diamond. And he's He's probably one of my favorites. He's not a draft per se, he's more of a heavy sport type, but he's a very, very pretty boy. Pretty boys. Um, this is Flurry. He's a uh, web special. I picked him up at Briarfest in the store for about 25 bucks, and he's probably my best showing draft horse. Um, I really, really love the gray coloring on him. And then this is Simba Dupont de Tournay, who was the uh, celebration model for 2015. And I actually like him better from the side with no mane, which I don't think you're going to be able to see because the cabinet's in the way. But he originally uh, wasn't one of my favorites, you know, not, not, not a really nice mold for me, but he's grown on me ever since then. So here are my drafters. And moving down, this is my decorator shelf. This first guy, I believe, is a JC Penny unicorn. I picked him up at a horse fair for about 50 bucks. He usually does pretty well for me. I have to fix his horn. He's got a little rub on his horn, but otherwise, he does really, really well for me all the time. And one of my holy grails, Mary Widow. She is fantastic. I think the Marabella mold is one of my favorite molds of all time. And if I could conga them, I would, but I don't think that's going to happen. So here she is with all her spooky spiders. Now this guy is from Briarfest 2015 and it's a little cave pony. And I've kind of been debating selling it. Um, we'll see. She's really, really cute, but she doesn't typically place well for me. There's always a bunch of other decorators that end up placing before her, but you know, that shouldn't be the only reason you keep a horse in your collection is to show it. Then this guy is um, one of the gold one-of-a-kinds from last year's Equilocity 2016. He's actually signed by Peter Stone, which I don't think... Nope, I can't see it from that angle, and I'm not going to take him out just yet, but... He is definitely one of my favorite models in my collection. Um, He's one of the t-shirt models. He actually had to be spotted around Lexington wearing um, one of the Equilocity t-shirts. Well, um, I had talked to Amy Showalter and I was like, oh, Amy, you know, I, you should get me one of those t-shirt models. And she, she spotted me and got me one and he was one of the last ones left, so I picked him. Um, this is Technicolor, one of the 2010 Briarfest special runs. Um, 2010 was my first Briarfest. So I still have a lot of um, horses from that Briarfest, but I also did sell a couple of them too. But I think Technicolors never sell for me. He's very, very pretty. I love the color change paint. You can kind of see how it goes from blue to purple. Um, he turns pink and green in some lights too. Then I have these little wind dancers and I'm honestly in love with, with the blue one. I think the blue one is my favorite out of the four but they're all absolutely adorable. And I snagged these as soon as we got them in. We got in two sets and I grabbed one of them. And then these two are the Stone Ecolocity Dinner Chip 
and then um, one of the Stable Mate Club horses from last year. I don't remember his name, actually, um, but I call him Rhodochrosite, like the, like the gemstone. But he's a very pretty pink. And then the Aquilocity Drafter here is actually, um, my camera, there we go. He actually has some subtle gold highlights over his purple paint job and blue eyes. I absolutely adore him. Moving down, another one of my holiest of holy grails is Ringmaster. And I was able to find Ringmaster, I want to say five years ago or so at the Midwest Horse Fair. And I got him for about 150 bucks. Um, definitely worth it. He doesn't show very well, but I also don't take him many places. Um, just honestly a personal piece for my collection that I really enjoy. That I would also like a lioness to go with, if you know the um, red Appaloosa on the rain mold. I'd like one of those to go with him, but chances are I will never find one. These guys, um, this little baby I bought for probably $10 quite a while ago. She's a little custom and she does excellently for me. Um, the other two were actually found in the bottom of a rummage sale bin, which is super hard to believe, especially when you look at this guy, whose name is Batwing, uh, Batwing and Red Robin. Um, and then this is um, Framed in Perfection. But uh, Batwing does really well for me in shows. Um, she does really well for me in shows. Uh, Tim, Red Robin there is a little iffy either way, but you know, they try their best. And then on this shelf we have Lua, which if you haven't seen the newest unboxing video, that will go up probably before this one. Uh, he's absolutely stunning. And then Forever Sage, and then the other Collector Club, Premier Club Horse, Hermosa and Corazon, and their mini -Me's. So actually I show the big two, um, Mare and Foal, as um, Campolinas. And then I show the smaller two as uh, Frisian sport horses. <laughs> Which, the little one actually did really, really well for me at Equilocity last year. And these two do really well for me. And so did he. I think he actually took me um, home a reserve grand champion. And then this guy, I believe, is Briarfest 2013, which is Ryman. But I call him Paranorman. He always looks spooked no matter what direction you look at him from. He always looks scared. So I got him about when Paranorman came out, so that's why I call him Paranorman. Moving on to the next part of my collection, I have Stage Mom and Child Star from Briarfest 2010. And this guy, uh, he's a little bit tippy. Um, I usually lay him down when he goes into the ring, but that doesn't typically affect his placings. I love the going gray color on him, and I think uh, he's probably the cutest Gillen um, <laughs> out of everything that they've released, and I will probably never get rid of these two. They're some of my favorites. If he'll stand, there we go. Then we have Melange, um, who was the A, um, <laughs> wow, I'm so bad, I'm sorry, who was another 2010 special run from Just About Horses. And she's also one of my favorites. Um, the Palomino Old Timer. He's named after my old Hofflinger pony that I used to have, Mr. Chip. Um, and I actually got him from Briarfest one year too at one of the... Um, I believe when you first walk into the covered arena, it's the retailer directly to the right. And they have a bunch of old vintage horses and boxes. These two... Um, are two of the surprise horses from Briarfest. The chestnut here is from 2012, and the dapple gray here is from 2013. And they do excellent for me in shows, and actually this girl right here is my performance horse some days. Um, I believe 2013, was that the year Frozen came out? I think, because actually her name is Arendelle, and then this guy's name is Apollo 13. Getting on to one of my bigger shelves, um, because this is where all my rearing models make their home. I have Matrix, and Matrix is one of my favorite briars, if not the favorite in my collection, uh, simply because he's the reason that I got into showing in the first place. 
So I got this horse um, for my birthday one year, and I I love spots. I love Dalmatians. I love leopard Appaloosas. Um, and so I got this guy. Well, my parents uh, called him the Cruella de Vil horse, and they absolutely to this day do not like him. And so I sh I went to a show for the first time. And he was my only horse to come away with a NAN card and a second place. And it was just hilarious to me that the horse that my parents didn't like placed so well. And so then it just made me want to hang on to him even more. Um, definitely, definitely my favorite briar. Uh, moving along to the right, we have this lovely conga of desitados. I don't have the original. I, that's one that I'm debating on whether or not I want to look for. But we have Aurelius, um, I believe Orion, and then the 2013 Briarfest special run. And I love all of them. I show uh, Aurelius as a Marimana, I show Orion as an Andalusian, and then um, I believe it's Two Step? I think so, I think it's Two Step, as a Criollo. Then going down, we have Bobby Joe. Um, definitely my favorite on this mold so far. I know Paint Me a Pepto just came out. She's really pretty too, but I, I, I am a total sucker for Red Duns, and her mapping is just amazing. Moving down, um, this is Sanku. He's a um, Winstone Editions koi fish. <laughs> koi fish. Uh, he's a hippocampus resin painted to look like a koi fish. And he's one that I painted for myself, uh, so I won't be selling him anytime soon. Um, but I love koi fish and I love chestnut pintos, so it was obvious that that was what I was going to do with my personal one. Going to the left here, this is Pisces. Um, he is also the same resin as Sanku, but he is for sale. He's the first one I painted. Um, and he actually did really well for me at the Equilocity show last year. Um, took away a couple grands and a couple first places um, in workmanship and, and in breed and whatnot um, as a fantasy horse. So he is for sale. If you want to know how much or if you want to know where to get him from, uh, comment down below and I will respond to you. I would really appreciate him going to a good home. Um, he's he's a total eye catcher at shows. And then this guy, this medicine hat over in the corner, is also painted by me. And he's another personal piece. Uh, his name is Tashanka. And his first show out was Briarfest last year. And he did super well. It was a giant Mustang class, and he came away with a sixth. And I was super duper proud. And I had never painted anything um, with that much white on it before. That was a lot, a lot of work, trust me. So there's that shelf with some of my uh, personal collection right. favorites. Next shelf. This is more or less the Peter Stone shelf. Um, for right now, anyway, while I have enough to contain into one spot. Uh, this little girl is... Um, oh, stop. Don't you just hate when models do that, when they do the, uh, <laughs> the domino effect? This little girl, funny story behind her is that, um, we really didn't know if we were buying her or not when I first scooped her up. Um, she was from Ecolocity 2015, and what happened was, we were looking at her, my mom really wanted her, and then she saw Peter Stone and she left us to go talk to Mr. Stone and left us with this horse that she had never told me if she wanted or not. So I stood there for half an hour holding this little girl um, while people stared at me wondering if I was actually going to buy her. She has such great attitude and I've actually named her Pocketful Sunshine because look at that sunny little face. Um, Peter did sign her as well. I have a couple horses signed by Peter. Um, so she's one that shows really well for me all the time. Then there's this bear, this mirror, that I got from Briarfest one year for 25 bucks in a room sale. Um, friend like me, or Jeannie, who is, um, oh my god, cannot for the life of me remember the actual name of the model, but he's very, very pretty. This is my 
design a horse, my pride and joy, um, Careless Whisper, who I show as a Camarillo white horse, and I'm currently saving up to get some parade tag for him. Loki, if you guys know Cinnamon Mew Mew or Amy Davies, this is one of her original characters that Stone made um, from the Conquering Tide series. And he's probably my favorite out of all of the horses released from that series. Then looking over here, it's Jenna! It's my mare! It's my girly! Um, for my graduation present, my mother got me a um, portrait horse of my Tricaner mare, Jenna. And everything is correct down to her little stockings on her feet. And she has a teeny tiny snip that it's probably too dark to see. But she's got a teeny tiny pink snip that's very accurate to the actual Jenna. Down here is White Rabbit from last year's Equilocity. Um, at Equilocity, the show, they actually give you um, not necessarily prize money, but like prize coupons. So your horses that win Grand and Reserves win certain amounts of money for you to go spend at Stone. So I actually got this guy almost for free, and these two actually almost for free as well, Wendy and Michael, the little cutting horse and calf. Moving down a shelf, this is my um, sort of uh, personal... Uh, these, these horses mean a lot to me for various reasons. Uh, Delilah. Yes, Saddle Club Delilah. My grandma got for me, and she has some terrible girth rubs from when I used to play with her, but she actually won me a prize model, which you can see back there, and I'm sorry that there isn't better lighting for this. Um, I don't have a lot of room to take horses out, but that is actually a glossy Rachel Alexandra, um, and I won two of them in Briarfest 2010. One with her, and actually one with my celebration horse, All Glory, whose name is now Independence Day. Um, but it was so weird to have my first Briarfest be one of the best Briarfests I've gone to just, just because you come home with two prize models and one of them is from your celebration horse. And the reason he got it, the judge told me that he has just the right twinkle in his eye. And I can definitely see what she means by that. But out of 60 horses and that one has the twinkle in its eye, it was just incredible. And I actually sold um, the other Rachel Alexandra, the glossy one, two years ago to pay for part of my college tuition. So kids, don't ever let your parents tell you that briar horses aren't worth the investment because they are. Then this guy right here, um, Fee Desperado, actually um, my mother bought him for me when one of my childhood horses, Yankee, died. Because Yankee was a quarter horse Arab cross who looked almost identical to uh, that model. And so she went and picked up that model and he was waiting for me when I got home one day after school. And then this is San Domingo. Another one of my birthday presents. Uh, some year, one year he was um, a model that I took everywhere. And I guess he's what started my sort of little obsession with chestnut pintos besides the fact that I own a chestnut pinto. Then going along the bottom of the shelf, we have some of my stable mates. You can see Django, uh, stable mate club horse, um, one of the Annie Oakley stable mates, a couple Wegg stable mates, All American Trio horse, a couple of regular runs, and then Sylvester from the stable mate club. Down another shelf, it's the pony shelf, and I need to do some rearranging. <laughs> but this is my uh, short shelf, essentially. The, this is Icicle. Um, I believe he was either a flagship special or some sort. Um, and I had one reserved for me at my local store. The store that we took over from. Um, the chestnut saddle, or the bay saddlebred, excuse me. The bay saddlebred there uh, was an Equilocity ice cream social special. And I actually got her for Christmas um, two years ago. And then these two... If you remember the customs from earlier, Batwing and Red Robin, these two were actually found in that same rummage sale bin. Well, it turns out that this guy is actually a run of 50 in Matt, and then this guy is probably a run of 8 or less. So talk about an awesome rummage sale find, and 
honestly, I'm, I'm amazed at the condition they came in. They're very, very good condition, but they weren't b bubble wrapped or anything when I found them. Here we have another prize model from 2012, and I believe this is the one that that little Clydesdale resin earlier won for me. Um, that year I also won a Shetland Pony, which was a reserve uh, champion, but I sold that Shetland Pony also for college tuition. You can make money off briars! This next little girl is a briar, f uh, not a briar fest. She was a briar fest find, but she is a JC Penny special run, I believe. And last but not least, on this shelf, we have uh, Sergeant the Mule. And he's been dubbed Ninja Mule by some of my show friends just because of that glare. Um, but for a while when we were going to a show, um, Equifest in Escanaba, he came home with the long ear uh, grand champion every year. Every year for like three years. And he still does really well for me in shows. And on the bottom here is <laughs> poor guy who needs to be repaired. Um, hot shot. I have probably replaced this peg three or four times now. See, he's supposed to stand on it. And it's just not working out. So I might have to drill another hole, stick a peg in there. And we'll see where that goes. Coming over to this side of my room. I know she's not on my briar shelf. Um, but this is Dances with Wolves. And if you remember our blog post from a while back um, about some special runs that Briar had up on their website, uh, she was from Briarfest 2010, and I wasn't allowed to buy her in 2010 because she was too expensive. But when the chance came up for me to get her at a discounted price, I absolutely leapt on it. And I'm so glad I did. She makes for a beautiful shelf piece. I don't take her a lot of places because I'm afraid, you know, she is porcelain. I don't want it to break, um, but she's hanging out here with my illustrated Harry Potter book, my awesome lantern, and um, my little time turner. So there you have it, Pony Pals. There's my collection pre-Briarfest. Now, hopefully I'll come back from Briarfest with not, not a ton of horses, but, you know, enough <laughs> to make up for this lack, this, this lack of horses and this empty shelf space down on the bottom. So this video will probably go up after, after our Wooloo unboxing, um, but before Midwest Horse Fair. Midwest Horse Fair is towards the middle of April, middle end of April, around there. So we'll have a Midwest Horse Fair vlog up and just lots of adventures in store for you soon. And I will see you later, Pony Pals. Thanks for coming on this collection tour with me.